Hey guys, I hope everybody is having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this video in the morning, in the evening, or in the afternoon, I am glad you're here. If you're so inclined and you get a second and you haven't yet, please subscribe below and click the bell notification so you'll be notified when I release videos and when I decide to have live streams and other shenanigans. But today I wanted to give my full review, so to speak, and I'm going to be doing a video, I'm going to go off on a ramble here, this is not a rant, there will be a separate video about rants, um, about this particular rant, but guys, knives are subjective, when I give a review, a long term review, I've had this knife for over a year, um, these knives that I go through in my channel are personal knives that I bought with my money. But anyway, don't take any of the things I say without going out, looking at other reviewers, looking at other people who do observations, reading some stuff online about the different knife you might be interested in. There are a lot of different processes you can go through to make sure what you're getting is what you want, and you're still not going to know. It's kind of like one of those things we do, right? I mean, I buy knives because I like the way they look, because something struck me and drug me in with this Chavez Redemption Street. It was the size and it was the look that I saw first. And then when I purchased the knife and it came in, there were things that I had to get used to, like the detent being so strong but it has been a fantastic knife. I don't remember absorbing a lot of videos on this particular knife, but I know that I watched a ton of YouTube videos on different knives. And to be honest with you, I haven't gotten a lot of bad knives. But then again, then I'll get into the review slash overview slash John's year with the Chavez Redention Street, which has been great by the way. Um, Reviews are, are, are subjective, right? I mean, everything that anybody says about a knife is their opinion. I have nothing but mad respect for people like Stasa and others who do major cut tests, who do literally test knives, put them through their paces. And I think that's great. Um, I just don't use my knives that way. I think it's cool. I think it's awesome. I think I should get what I pay for. So I hear all the arguments. It's just, I don't think that reviewers or observers, what we really are is knife lovers who put stuff under a camera and talk about it, um, should be anybody's authority on decisions, right? And I'm sure the hard use guy in Alaska who's going to quote unquote use their shit is not getting on YouTube to watch what any of us think about a knife before they decide what they're going to go stick into the side of a bear head. But anyway, ran over Chavez Redention Street. Fantastic knife. Um, it's a knife that I've had in my collection, like I say, for over a year. It's, um, it's, G10, the one I particularly picked out, you could get this knife in either titanium, in G10, or in carbon fiber. I have on a lot of the knives that I have in my collection that offer you G10, is those are the ones I select. And it's not just a cost thing, because we're talking about $10, $20 difference, it's the texture thing. So I don't have, although I have a lot of pure titanium knives, full titanium knives, Chavez is when I look at them and the ones that have come through the the crib here have been G10 and Titanium my Leong Ma's are G10 and Titanium and that's just the way I like it But this knife has an M390 blade um, I don't know how well it was heat treated I know I've used this hollow grind and this rounded out drop point Which is really more of a Tonto because it's compound ground with a hollow point here a really nice Swedge here that almost looks like it could be sharpened. It's not sharp um, But it would definitely aid I guess in penetrating and that tip is extra thick So I'm sure that would give you any extra leverage for prying I don't pry with my knives, but I can see where that would be handy the part of the knife that I've used most because most of my use is opening Amazon packages has been the tip and the belly and it does work very well. Um, the grip for me, I've heard people complain that this knife is too small, and when the Redention 229 came back out, or the um, 
last Chavez drop that came out that was a full-size version of this, where I consider this more of a medium-sized knife, I opted out of that because I didn't need a larger Chavez. This gives me a full handful, and we'll get the little Ben Peterson NAF ruler and take some measurements here shortly, but it fits my hand perfectly. This is not a finger choil, although it could be used for it if you just absolutely had to. This is just a really well done sharpening choil. The knife and the jimping, which is very aggressive but not uncomfortable, the way I use it is in this grip right here. It's a single grip knife for me, but it's a grip that adorns my hand and, and feels really nice. Um, it is on bearings, so it is drop shutty. One of the things that when I first got this knife, I was having a hard time with was the reverse flick because it has such a strong detent. And it's also got, if you really bear down on it, which I don't bear down on my knives anymore that are frame locks, but if you grip down on this frame lock here, it does tend to make the knife lock up. Again, for me, it's natural to hold my knives when I'm opening them on the pocket clip putting any of my gripping tension, so to speak, up around the pivot, leaving the back part of the knife and the lock bar tension free. See, I just failed it there, not because I didn't get a good flip, it's because I hit this finger with the blade. But I can reverse flick it, I can thumb flick it. It's got really snappy detent. I would say on the, on the tighter, harder detent side. But um, give me two seconds, guys. I'm just gonna reach over here and grab my Ben Peterson NAFCO titanium ruler that I have a hell of a time reading. Um, let's see where I put it. There it is. All right, so this knife, guys, has a handle of right over four inches, four and an eighth inches, and it has a blade that is going to come in right at three and a quarter inches with a cutting edge of right around three inches, right under three inches, we'll call that, let's see, you know, right over three inches, about three and a quarter. Um, and the blade again is about three and a quarter. So that makes the knife, if I do my math right, four plus three and a quarter, about seven and a half inches overall, a little less than seven and a half has very well done thumb studs. I say they're removable because they're T6. I don't know why you would want to remove these thumb studs, but I guess if you wanted to go to tie connector and get some different studs for this knife, you could do it. I have not taken the knife apart, even though I did buy some skiff bearings for this knife. I do have some skiff bearings for this particular knife, size for this knife, but have not um, put them in yet. As a matter of fact, I might have used them in one of my other knives, but I wish I could get a better image of this nice ground swedge here on the spine. It's super, super cool looking, and with the single grip that I have, I don't even get close to the swedge because the jimping holds me back. Um, I love the grind lines on this deep hollow grind here. I love the way that the grind lines look on the front of the knife. Um, the titanium, I've carried this knife quite a bit and it seems to be pretty resistant to snail trails. Um, maybe I haven't bumped into it as much, the clip as much. I do like the skull clip, but I do hate the fact that it's now removable and you've got these T8 eyebrows that, you know, kind of look like eyebrows on the skull, I think. Chavez should have stuck with the skull, and that's just my opinion. It's totally subjective. Um, I've not even put on the clip that comes with this knife. There's another clip that comes in the box because you could switch it out if you wanted to. I don't want to. But the titanium, the lock bar, the lock up on this knife, the way that the lock up is designed with the angles, this looks very, very sound, I would guess would be the word to say. It's probably at about 30% lockup. I can see a very distinct angle on the blade and it does have the steel lock bar insert. These studs have very gentle, I would call it ribbing, not jimping around them, where they've got this um, just 
what would you call it on a tactile turn pin? Kind of fluted, uh, gen kind of fluted little milling pattern in the tie connector there, or the tie thumb studs, which give it grip, uh, make it easy to, to flip the knife out, but don't make it uncomfortable at all. It is very drop shutty, not that that's a thing that we measure anything by, and that's also very subjective, but it's not dangerous because it does have a very um, determined point of break right here, so you could easily close this knife and never put yourself in any type of blade impact of your hand type of situation. Not that that's even a word, it's more of a description of doing dumb shit with your knife. But anyways, that is the Chavez Redention Street drop point. Even though it looks like a Tanto, this is the drop point version. The Tanto is a little bit more um, pronounced and it is cool. And if I get another Chavez, or should I say when I get another Chavez knife, um, I will probably opt for the Tanto. But guys, the most important thing about the time that you spend with me and the things that I hope you take away from here are not, should I buy this knife or should I not buy that knife? Um, this should just be something that helps show you the knife maybe you haven't seen or see how it fits in a little dude with a medium to large size hand um, grip or let get the insight of someone who's owned it for a year hasn't batoned it through any type of firewood but has used it for what most of us use knives for edc type of things it carries well it is a bigger knife it's designed to be kind of overbuilt and thick so in the pocket when you put it in your pocket you will newsflash know it's there but the clip goes in and out of pocket easily um, I think it's just a really well done knife. Most importantly though, guys, please look out for the guy or gal to your left. Please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Please look out for each other. I apologize for the rant at the beginning of the video. I'll do a special video that I'll call, why do I say, choose debate, not hate, keep loving your heart, move forward with debate, not hate, because it's so easy to just blindly hate. But as I'm getting back off in a rant now, this is very subjective. Collecting is very subjective. Knives are very subjective. Subjective means what I like, you might hate, or what you like, I might not care for. I don't say the word hate because I've tried to get hate out of my heart and hate out of my vocabulary. But the bottom line is we're all different. So use the debate part of my plea to learn what the other person's position is and don't choose hate. Guys, I love each and every one of you. I look forward to seeing you Friday night on John's Friday Night Flicks and hope you all come on there with a smile on. Look forward to unwinding after a long week. I love you all. Peace.